So the next big topic, now that we've talked about the etiologies of pulmonary hypertension, I would like to talk about how it's diagnosed. So let's go back to the definition, right? So the definition of pulmonary hypertension was that their mean pulmonary arterial pressure had to be greater than or equal to 25 milliliters of mercury. So how do we actually get to this value? So, you know, as for any kind of disease and for any process, we want to have two types of tests. So there's a screening test for pulmonary hypertension and there's a diagnostic test. So the screening test, screening, and we want screening tests to be non-invasive. So the screening test is going to be an echo, echocardiogram. And the diagnostic test is going to be right heart catheterization, right heart cath. So, and it makes sense why this one's screening, this one's diagnostic, because for an echo, all you're doing is you're taking an ultrasound probe and you're holding it over a person's chest, or you know, if you are doing the esophageal, it's a little bit more invasive, but that echo is just a simple picture, whereas a catheter, you actually have to go into the heart, into the vessel. So this one's a little bit more arduous and it's not something that you would want to do as a screening test. So how does an echo screen for pulmonary hypertension? Well, it's actually pretty interesting. So what you have, let's, let's draw the heart out to have this discussion. So. Let's say this is, you know, this is the right atrium, the right ventricle, left atrium, left ventricle. There is a aptoid tract, and here is the here is the pulmonary artery. Okay, so. What does an echo do? Well, an echo measures the motion of the heart. It can look at both the anatomy, so the structure, and it can look at the physiology, meaning the function of the heart and see how well it beats. Another cool thing about echo is that you can do echo with Doppler. And what Doppler does is it looks at the flow of blood. And the way that it does that is, you know, the we talk about in physics, in the introductory physics, that there's the Doppler effect. So, uh, you know, there's a there's a car that's moving towards you, and they're you know they're blasting their you know they're blasting their radio. You know, music is coming out anywhere. Uh, when they're coming towards you, the pitch sounds louder. I mean, sorry, the pitch sounds higher and when they're going away from you the pitch sounds lower and that's because you know if you're this person you're the observer if, as, as, if the car is moving and emitting sound waves sound waves get bunched up because of the added motion of you know you you have a certain velocity you know velocity of the car and you have a you know velocity of the sound and added together you know because of that the frequency increases if the car is moving away, then it more it's spaced out, so the frequency decreases. Doppler in echo works the same way. So if you have blood that's flowing, you know Doppler looks at, you know, if the blood's flowing towards the probe, then the frequency is going to increase. If the blood's flowing away, the frequencies are going to decrease. So that's why you know on on, you know, if you're looking at a Doppler echocardiogram, you'll see these big gusts of like red, and then eventually it'll be blue when it's flowing away. So, and it look, makes for some very pretty pictures. So, going back to pulmonary hypertension, what, what does this allow us to do? So, if, you're, if you have an echo, uh, what an echo can measure, it can measure blood flow. And specifically, the interesting part is flow across the tricuspid valve. So, 
what is going to happen if there's increased pressure here? Well, increased pressure here is going to cause a little bit of an increased pressure here. And when the heart beats in systole, you know, what, what, where does the blood want to go? The blood wants to go up through here into the pulmonary artery. And the blood also wants to go back to the right atrium. But the tricuspid valve doesn't let it because it closes and it prevents the blood from, from backflowing. But, you know, even with people without, you know, with, without tricuspid regurg, there might be a tiny trickle of blood that kind of gets through because it's not a perfect system and the valve doesn't perfectly close. If you have increased pressure here in the pulmonary artery, hence, you know, pulmonary arterial hypertension, the pressure here is going to increase and this kind of trickle of blood might increase. So this right here is very important because if you think about it, this actually could serve as a proxy for the pressure here. So what this is called, what this flow is called, let's call this the tricuspid regurgitant jet velocity. So the blood here has a certain speed that's associated to velocity, I should say, that the echo can measure based on the Doppler. They can, it can look at the characteristics of the waves that this jet transmits to the transducer and estimate a velocity. This velocity can actually be used to do some cool calculations. So using this velocity, we can estimate the pressure inside here using the Bernoulli equation. So without going into specifics of what the equation is, suffice it to say that, let's just say that the right ventricular pressure can be calculated or estimated as four times the tricuspid regurgitant velocity squared. So we've got this pressure here uh, that can be estimated like this and based on just the jet velocity and we also need to add a correction factor because this jet is actually pushing against the right atrium which already has some blood in it so we also have to add the right atrial pressure here because we need that as a correction factor so this actually, you know, we can also call this the central venous pressure. These are interchangeable because we can assume that, you know, because this is a very low pressure system, blood coming in from the, you know, superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava just kind of pools into the right atrium. So these are interchangeable. Now, assuming there's no applet obstruction, then this is actually you know, then the art with the right venous pressure is actually pretty, a pretty good estimate of the pulmonary arterial pressure. So we can use this equation, right? Pulmonary arterial pressure is going to be equal to four times the tricuspid regurgitant velocity squared plus the central venous pressure. So this is, in basic terms, how an echo can estimate the pressure in the pulmonary artery. So what does the right heart cath do? Why is this a diagnostic test? Well, this doesn't even require as much of an estimation because it's actually pretty, you know, the technique for doing this is a lot harder because this is actually an invasive test, but the principle is a lot easier. Essentially what you do is, and I'll draw this in red so that it's easier to see, you just spread a catheter, you know, through something like, you know, through the femoral vein, let's say, it goes all the way up here. You thread it all the way through here, through the tricuspid valve, into the right ventricle, up through the pulmonic valve, and into here. And it can actually directly measure the pressure here and it's not an estimate, hence why it's a diagnostic test, whereas an echo is just a, a screening test. And essentially the echo, you know, there's a lot of imperfections there because, you know, if there's any obstruction here, the pulmonic valve has any sort of calcification for some reason, or it's, you know, if there's, if 
there's any pulmonic uh, stenosis for any other reason, if there's a tract obstruction, if the morphology of this wall is different, maybe it's a little too thick, then the, it's not going to be as good of an estimate of the pulmonary arterial pressure. And also, you know, how good is Doppler at getting this velocity? It's not great. So this is why the right heart cath is a diagnostic test.